Bibot, who had childhood polio, designed and built this tricycle from scrap metal and bicycle parts. We followed Bibot for a day as he bought eggs and prepared balot, a popular Filipino snack, and sold it that evening along the highway. Bebolt is upgrading his tricycle, today buying reflective tape at an auto parts store. Like most Filipinos, Bebolt lives surrounded by family, and thus being a contributing member to the group is more important than being able to do everything by himself. In the rough terrain around his house, crawling is in many ways more practical than a wheelchair, and many activities such as cooking take place at ground level. In one evening, Bebolt was able to earn about seven dollars, almost double the local minimum wage. Sarah Finn is likewise a Balot vendor. He is one of our factory's customers, using one of our ordinary wheelchairs on the rough terrain near his house on the outskirts of the city. Seraphim's wife helps him prepare balot, which he sells in the heart of the city using a locally built racing wheelchair fitted with a basket. Seraphim travels 15 kilometers in each direction several times a week to reach his regular customers. Orly is famous in Cagayan de Oro for his motorized rolling store, which he designed and built. Orly additionally modified one of our factory's wheelchairs to allow him to sell in areas too small for his larger store to reach. In previous years, Orly operated a smaller pedal-powered version of the rolling store, proceeds from which helped pay for both his wheelchair and for his new rolling store. Like Orly, Lando now operates a gas-powered tricycle which he invented, but first started with a pedal-powered device which was cheaper to operate and maintain. However, Lando uses his devices not for selling, but for transportation to the various places where he works as an electrician. We also spent time with people who were not currently tricycle users, but were potential tricycle customers. Jose is both a customer and an employee of Handicap International's wheelchair factory. A survivor of spinal cord injury, Joe supports his wife and daughter with his salary from the factory, and he lives close enough to commute by wheelchair. Joe would have difficulty crawling, and his wheelchair is well suited for mobility inside his small home. However, transporting loads long distances can be difficult. Gina, who had childhood polio, walks with crutches, but finds it easier to use our city model wheelchair for distance travel. <laughs> Mela, another of our customers, uses her wheelchair similarly, but usually needs help to cover long distances. So, uh, so nice road. <laughs> Marlon, another technician in our factory, had polio as a child. Marlon lives too far away to commute by wheelchair. A guitarist in a local band, Marlon has many social ties that keep him from relocating closer to work. 
public transportation is a helpful but expensive part of Marlon's daily life. Our tricycles will be built in the Wheelchair Production Center, established by Handicap International and USAID. A non-profit enterprise, the factory produces export quality mobility products under the brand name Freedom Technology. Tricycles are the latest addition to a product line which includes daily use wheelchairs, sports wheelchairs, and supported seating systems. Second to user needs, manufacturing capacity gives shape to the product. In the Philippines, a great variety of manufacturing technologies are available. Tricycle designs exist throughout the world. Having gained some familiarity with user needs, we could now begin to appreciate some of the features and drawbacks of those designs, and to have meaningful conversations with their inventors. Once we had some ideas of our own, our small but well-equipped shop was an excellent place to create prototypes. We built two prototypes. In black paint, the practical cargo utility trike in red, the fun, sporty, sport commuter trike. We first took the tricycle to B-Boat. Although he appreciated the look of our tricycle and its high cargo capacity, he pointed out that there were several features of his prototype, such as backing feature, that were superior to our prototype. Lando had similar comments about the black cargo utility tricycle. However, while B-Boat had shown no interest whatsoever in the red tricycle, both Lando and his friend, also a polio survivor, were extremely enthusiastic. Okay, we Despite obvious ergonomic problems, they greatly enjoyed the speed and maneuverability of the red trike. Jose found the cargo carrying capacity and speed of the tricycle very useful for bringing things to his house and had no trouble handling mixed terrain. However, he still used a wheelchair for indoor mobility. While Marlon found the speed and range of our tricycle superior to the wheelchair, he regretted that he could not fold the tricycle and put it in a jeepney. People responded differently to the challenge of learning a new device. Some people seemed uncomfortable with it. However, other people seemed to really be having a good time. Based on what we learned from our research and from our initial prototypes, we can now begin to formulate a product specification. Please refer to the proceedings for details, but here is a summary of the critical points. Our primary user should have some ability to walk or crawl at least indoors. However, the tricycle should be configurable for someone with spinal cord injury. A rider should be able to comfortably maintain walking speed on bad pavement or on smooth dirt roads and should be able to climb a 1 to 12 slope. Distance between shoulders and pedals should be adjustable so that trunk control is not required to use the tricycle. The seat should provide support for a pressure relief cushion. Additionally, the footrest should be adjustable to provide the foot support needed for proper pressure relief. Cargo capacity should be greater than that of an able-bodied adult carrying a large pack and should be configurable by the user to the type of cargo they want to carry. The tricycle should not break down any more frequently than a single-speed bicycle. The purchase cost should be less than about 150% of the price of a wheelchair, or approximately $200 US. The cost of maintaining our tricycle should be equivalent to the cost of maintaining a single speed bicycle. All parts which might wear out, such as tires and ball bearings, should be readily available in a village, bicycle shop, or hardware store. The design must take into account the safety of the rider in terms of falls, in terms of collisions with traffic, and in terms of secondary disabilities such as pressure sores. The next step is to produce a limited number of prototypes for long-term user testing and to conduct more in-depth trials of the product in more realistic settings via the staff of our distribution network. If we do our work well, this additional product will represent a new option for mobility, a more targeted and effective use of customer and donor resources, and a more specialized tool by which people with disabilities can achieve their goals.